Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show here on HWWS Web TV. I'm your host, GW Pomacher. Uh, with everything going on in the world, we are in the studio. We're staying in the studio. We're locked in the studio. We're sealed off in the studio. I'm expecting any day now they're going to hermetically seal the studio. I don't know how it's going to work, but I know this. I know we can still come to you and bring you some amazing interviews with artists, art, uh, authors, filmmakers, musicians, creative minds of all kinds, because thanks to the power and awesomeness of technology, the same power that you're using to watch this video, we're able to reach out to our friends and our artists and our creators around the web and still bring great interviews to you. So hit subscribe. We're going to give you a second. Go ahead. You know you want to. Hit the button. That's great. Perfect. Now that you've done that, though, all the kids are saying it, smash the bell. I don't even know what that means. I think there's a bell that you're supposed to push. Push that so you can be notified whenever we've got a new author, a new filmmaker, a new musician, a content creator of some time. We're in the studio and we're hanging out right now online with author, podcaster, entrepreneur, the one and only Dan Fox. So, Dan, how are you, man? Welcome. Good, good. Thank you so much. I, uh, I can't see you guys right now on the thing. I don't know if that's normal when we're split between screens, but uh, yeah, you're doing I well. On occasion, when we go, when we split the screens around on a mobile device, yeah. uh, you won't be able to see us, but we can see you. Facebook Live can see you. And no more problem. importantly, the recording devices can see you so that we can get this up on YouTube. So, Very welcome, nice. Dan. Welcome Thank to you. the show. Thanks a lot. So, um, Dan, let's talk a little bit uh, about your journey as a creator in your own right. You are an author. Yes, sir, I am. I think my first book was published in 2016. Uh, I have two novels out. They're both thriller, uh, mystery thrillers with a hint of uh, paranormal, and I am currently working on my third novel in between all this other stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. Um, what uh, what drew what made you want to write your first novel? What, 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 is it, what spoke to you and said, hey, guess what? Uh, success is overrated. You should be an artist. <laughs> exactly right. Um, it's a great question. I, uh, it's funny. About probably twelve or thirteen years ago, I, you know, I've always been an avid reader, reader my whole life since I was probably in middle school. And about thirteen years ago, my girlfriend, then now fiance Angie, uh, she mentioned something about writing, and I said, "Oh, I started writing a book." Um, so I take it back. Sorry. This was three years ago, about 13 years ago. I started this book that I never finished about three or four years ago. She asked me about it. Time flies. I've just said 2016. So it would have been 2015. And uh, she asked me about where's the book that you started writing at the time, nine years ago. And I was like, oh, it's it's uh, filed away. You're never going to read it. I'm never sharing that. Well, to make a short story long, as it were, I uh, I ended up letting her read it. And she really liked it and said, um, you know, you should get writing. So I came home from uh, work, my day job one day, and there was one of those desks that you can like put in your lap for your laptop. And it said, uh, I had a sticker on it that said, get writing. And it kind of inspired me to, to take off and do it. So it's been a, it's been a fun journey. I love doing it. And, uh, and the uh, response that I've got from my work has been very fulfilling. And, uh, you know, I'm chasing the dream. That is fantastic. That is really awesome, man. Now that that first book was in the dark, correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. in the dark. I love the I love the the tagline, if you will, the book blurb. I love the you know what would you do if you couldn't remember your own life? I, yes. I love the idea that conscience is a product of memory. Yes, so do I. I love those kinds of uh, stories. Some of my favorite. Uh, I hasten to say books because sometimes I think they were only movies, but. Stories like uh, Memento or Before I Go to Sleep or Fight Club even. Um, stories where you don't know if you can rely on the narrator 100% because you're getting their perspective. But I like stories about memory or confusion. I love first-person perspective stories where you, you might not be able to tell what's going on because you're seeing the book from their, uh, from their perspective. And of course, I love books with a big twist. So both of my novels have big twists. Well, and I think that it, what, what it's really fun about being a, a writer is the idea that you get to play with the question, what if? Right. Oh, and, and when you when you start asking things like, you know, you know uh, uh, a great example would be uh, the um, uh, stories kind of like The Invisible Man. Yes. If you don't have to look at yourself in the mirror, 
are you still yourself? Are you still yeah. a good person? And oh, in your world, and in your world, it's a, you never have to look at yourself in the mirror because you won't remember. So if you don't remember your life, does anything matter that you did before? Right. Um, you have no conscience. Conscience is a product of memory. Absolutely. So it's, it's a really great question. It's a really great what if to pose. Um, and, um, and it's a really great what if to pose for a mystery. Yes. Because it's a mystery to the narrator. It's a mystery to the protagonist. But the most fun is trying to make it a mystery for the reader. Yes, and that is that is one of my favorite things about a book because I'm one of these people and always have been where if you're reading a book or watching a movie or, or TV or whatever, I'm always trying to figure out what is going to happen or what the twist is. you know. And you know how you'll sit there with someone and go, okay, that's the guy who did it. And you've got like a reason. So when in my writing, I have tried very hard to first off connect all the dots because – uh, there's some frustration for me as a consumer rather than a creator when you get to the end of a story and there's pieces of it that still don't make sense. And I know that sort of ambivalent ending, like um, oh, what's the movie uh, where they go inside a dream, inside of a dream? I can't think of the name of it. With Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. It, well, that's just it. When you have that kind of ambivalence at the ending, it, you still have to uh, – you still have to answer the questions that people are there to get answered. Right. And I feel like it needs to be tidy. I'm, I'm definitely an author that if you were paying very close attention, I put some very subtle clues in there. But you'd have to be you'd have to be really, really good about paying attention to every little detail. And I haven't had anyone that sort of predicted the end of the book before they got to it. But uh, but I really enjoy that. I really enjoy taking the reader on a journey, having them guess the questions along the way of what could be happening, why is that happening, and then at the end, blowing their mind with a twist and having them go, instead of having them go, that doesn't make any sense, having them go, oh, wow, and have, you know, sort of having their mind blown. I, I love that. For those, of you who are, for those of you who are watching on the internet, uh, in, in writer's process, as the, the, the storyteller that most familiar, and there are so many of us out here, guys, Check out those books on Amazon. Go on over there and check them. But the one that you're most familiar with is probably M. Night Shyamalan right now. Uh, he oh, is yes. famous for doing that to people, showing you it. along the way, but showing you this piece as a background piece. And then later on making you go, oh, I can't believe I missed that. Exactly. Uh, it, it was there the whole time. Um, those are great stories because you can see the breadcrumbs being dropped. But you're, uh, it really what I always love about watching those kinds of movies or reading your kind of books is that um, as a writer, there's a formula. And so you once you've done this for a while, your brain works a funny way and you start doing that math, even though you don't want to. You want to be entertained, but your brain yeah. starts doing the math and you start sure. saying it's this guy or it's that guy or it's right. this way or it's that way. And I love it when a writer can trick me and let my writer's brain do the me math too. and still be wrong. Absolutely, uh, me too. It's, it's it's like one of the few times when a when a, when, a, when a person, especially a creative artist, sits down and wants to be wrong. I yes. want you. I, my writer's brain is going to kick in, and I'm going to see all your tropes along the way. Exactly. And when I see them, it is it it really is good storytelling for you to be able to drop those in to keep my mind busy, but then a little sleight of hand over here and trick me right. at the end. I love that. That's fantastic. Now, in addition to to writing your own stories, uh, you have oh, well, well. Let's start with the other stories that you have here. You have Lies That Bind. Yes, that's my latest novel. Okay, that's a supernatural book. Um, uh, it's 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 got a supernatural element to it, but I hasten to say it's supernatural because I think that's part of the fun of the plot. And it's funny because just this morning, you guys know Jamie Engel from the Right Engel. Uh, absolutely, Jamie. So just this wonderful. morning, I was on a. Uh, we were just talking. You and I were just talking about having one using the web, but. Jamie and I were on a, a uh, author sort of workshop this morning on Zoom with a bunch of different authors. And one of the pieces of homework that we had was to write your log lines for your book, which is, for those not familiar, that's a single sentence that you can pitch like an elevator pitch for a book. And it's funny because the uh, you say it's paranormal. If I were to give my brand new log line for that book, it's that a teenage boy and his family are stalked by a deranged criminal while a middle-aged couple longing for children consider the unthinkable. There's my long, there's my elevator pitch for that one. Nice, nicely done. Uh, it, it, she literally saves you the time to write down 
all of that beforehand. It was really funny because she wanted me to know it, which is great. Uh, oh, but yeah. Um, so um, when you, when, uh, now let's, let's shift gears a little bit because when you're sure. not writing on your own, uh, you're an online content creator as well. Uh, you, Angie, are doing the, um, it, um, uh, it's all fine and dangy. We are. We're actually, uh, we'll be on, both of us will be on your, your uh, show here in a couple hours. That's right. That's right. And we're going to talk a little bit about It's All Fine and Dangy with both of you, which will be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, but what I wanted to ask you specifically is as, as a creator on both sides, uh, what straddling that is like uh, creating uh, Internet content, guys, whether it is podcasting, radio streaming, uh, video streaming, et cetera. There is a creative side to this and then there's a technical side to this. We have to yes. use both sides of our brain simultaneously. And it, I always find it interesting to take my creative artists who are working in in creating uh, over at, you know, when you sit at your keyboard and you're starting to bang out the chapters to a book, it's all here. It's all this creativity floating around. And when you bring that over to web media, now you have to engage that technical side of your brain that you use in your day job. And yes. You have to put them together. What is that transition like for you? Uh, do you find it easy? Do you find it difficult? Well, for me... Uh Angie would tell you, Angie would probably laugh here, but I do find that uh, I found that a little more easy for me because I have been in a technical role in my day job for 30 years. I've been in working with engineering firms since I was 17. Um, and uh, I'm an IT director for a, a large scale engineering firm now in the U.S. and Canada. That's my day job. But I have always been so people that have known me for years that were always like, how did you get into a technical job? You were always such a creative person. I've always done like painting and drawing and anything you can think of. Uh, just interested in, in that kind of a thing. Um, I, I, you know how artists generally have a sort of uh, almost like an unspoken language language between us. I've always been drawn to other artists. So for me, when we started doing this, when I started writing or we started doing the online uh, content stuff, the technical side of it for me, if I'm honest, even with the podcast, that was as appealing as the idea of actually helping the community and stuff. Just I started thinking in my head, oh, you're going to get this equipment and these microphones. And so for me, it was an easy transition. And uh, we've converted a room in our house to like a full blown studio now. And I love it. We've probably gone overboard a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's the sort of IT nerd side of me. No. And that's, you know what, that, uh, that's the side of me that didn't really exist until we started this. I, right. I've been a creative writer and that, as a journalist, a technical writer in some sure. cases, but my skills have always been with, you know, putting two words together and, and making them jive. Um, and then when we started the show, I found that there was a whole set of technical skills that I now needed to have that I had quite literally avoided the entirety of my life. I, I we have a running joke on the show. I'm an artist. I don't do math. Um, nice. <laughs> but, well, I don't really do uh, math either, believe that, it or not. Uh, now I'm an online artist, and yeah. thanks to the way the internet works, I have to do math yeah. uh, right, routinely. So uh, it, it's always interesting for me to talk to other creatives and content creators and say, do you prefer the creative part of things or do you prefer the technical side? Of the, in your case, you've kind of taken that and made them one. Where I you really can, have. It's yeah. almost like you found a way to blend the two sides of your personality. Exactly. Jack and I are working together now. It's uh, I think it's been a blessing, but it's also kind of a curse because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist in the way that I write in my own head. You know, I have to keep massaging things, but in the technical stuff, too. So that's why I said Angie would probably laugh, because, for instance, we're in the tail end of a home renovation and I have smart done a smart home. Every room has automated smart home lighting and, you know, locks on the doors and air conditioning and it's all wired together and you can do. But when something goes wrong in our house with the kids or with her or anybody's technical device, it is everything for me has to stop and I have to fix it because I can't stand it when the things don't work. So I think it's a blessing and a curse to be technically minded, especially if you're a little OCD about it. Uh, uh, I, as it I relates to the art, though, mixing the two has been pretty easy for me. That is awesome, though. That is fantastic. Guys, uh, out on YouTube, we have to wrap this interview up, but we're going to talk, talk to uh, Dan a little bit more uh, in our Facebook feed. So stay uh, if you're if you're online for that, stay here. Um, as we wrap it up, we want to thank our partners, uh, my wonderful daughter-in-law, 
uh, Kimberly and my granddaughter, Baby G, at Mommy and G Creations for all of our merchandising. Uh, Josh Bauer, our artist in residence at J. Bauer Art Space Coast Comics and Space Coast Comic Con. NSC Live TV for helping to share these videos. Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida. Families helping other families throughout Central Florida in, in their time of need. Now is the time to... Uh, to be out there giving and sharing what you can. And our great friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, thank you for all your support. Thank you for logging on. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to come back next to see who we're hanging with.